Hi, everyone, and welcome to the Canadian Pageant Network. My name is Mai Santana Pilar, and I am your host for tonight's topic. And I have a good friend with me, a very good friend who is the current director of Miss Young International Pageant, um, which is um, going to be their um, first annual international pageant. He's no other than Mark Janave. Hi, Mark. Manix. Manix. Hi, Mia. Manix. <laughs> Manix is your nickname though, right? Yes. Okay. So I met Mark actually in... Manix. I met Manix. <laughs> 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 I, I, I met Mannix actually in, the, in, in India during the Miss, ya, uh, Miss Teen International pageant where his daughter was competing representing the Philippines back in 2018. And so after that, we've just been good friends. But he has, his, he has been involved in the world of pageantry for a very long time. So... Um, Mannix, would you be able to introduce yourself and uh, be able to let the viewers know about your life and how you got started in the pageant industry? Yeah, so my name is Mannix Hanabe. Um, I, I, I own Boards and Entertainment Ventures Company. So basically, we are the people behind Mr. Universe Tourism, this one. Uh, that's our really main pageant. And uh, last year, we just uh, rehashed Binoong Pilipinas, which is basically we're positioning it as the male counterpart of Binibiring Pilipinas. Um, the grand winner, of course, joined uh, Mr. Universe Tourism. And then, um, what you call this, uh, we, we join also Man of the Year, Gentleman of the World, and Mistress of the World in India. And then now, uh, one of the pageants that we currently have is Miss Young. Um, which is actually a rehash also of a former Miss Young pageant. Though we're not totally related, um, it has been gone for a long time. And then uh, when we checked the IPO, it's free, so we registered it. And then now um, I've been involved in pageants because of my daughter. Um, she joined Miss Philippine Youth since 2008. Uh, she won January 2018, and from then on, um, we've been, I find it a fun industry and uh, it's like a toy <laughs> for, for me and my partner, Dr. Bernilla. Yeah. So from then on, we've been doing pageants. We've done Miss Teen Tourism Philippines. We've also done Mr. Universe Tourism Philippines back in 2018. <laughs> and then last year, we did Ginoong Pilipinas as well as uh, Mr. Universe Tourism. Okay. So basically, that's but... uh, how I started with pageantry. We want to educate people because I know that and um, there was also a version of Miss Young International mm -hmm. that was held yes. by the Anchera, Um and we've yes. been a victim of it. So just yeah. to let everybody aware about that, but um, this is not um, connected to the current Miss Young. Because, yes, it is not. Um, because Mark Anchera did not actually bought the rights of the Miss Young International title, mm -hmm. which is owned by the Miss International title in Japan. So this, yeah. but this one is new, fresh, and it's separate from yes. Miss International. It's separate also. It's not um, the continuation of the yes. Mark and Chetta production. So maybe you want to say something like yes. that to clear the yeah. air? Yeah, so basically, Miss Young, uh, we registered it back in 2018. We got the Intellectual Property Office to approve the name uh, last year, 2019. Hence, we, we basically own the trademark. And as you know, in pageantry, all you have to do is own the trademark and then you can already mount it. So we're not related to Miss International of Japan. Uh, we're independent of them. Uh, we're not related also to Mar a certain Mark and Chetta, which has a very uh, bad uh, bad past and uh, bad memories with, with him. So we're not 
were not related to them. So basically, and we're, this is a, we're different. The Board Gen Entertainment is actually a legitimate organization. So again, yeah. um, um, we've been, uh, we always screen the organizations that we actually link mm-hmm. ourselves into because that's very important, mm-hmm. especially nowadays. Um, a lot of people yeah. goes into the pa- uh, to the pageant industry for the wrong reasons. And uh, it's yeah. creating a bad taste in people's mouth yes. because of yeah. that. So That's true. Uh, I think all you have to do is like, if you want to join a pageant or if not, if, you're, if you want to get a franchise uh, for an international pageant, all you have to do is like do the, your due diligence. It's like buying a property. You have to examine first the papers and stuff like that before, mm-hmm. before you know, sending someone. Because it's really hard, especially for people from different countries to fly to a host country and then just find out that they were scammed or if not, they were, um, felt up, they were believed, they were made in, to believe that it's, it's a legit one, though it's not, you know. Or human trafficking to begin yes. with. So yeah, I, 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 I heard a lot of rumors about that. And, you know, I heard, especially for women, uh, that's, that's why we're very careful in mounting female pageants. We often encourage parents to be around during, uh, I remember during Miss Teen Tourism uh, Philippines, we never had swimsuits because it's for teens, you know, and uh, we replace it with sportswear and uh, all the shoots, eh, all the times that we have to, the the patients, I mean the candidates have to be with to, to be with us. We encourage them to bring their parents, even though they cannot be in the same room. They they're in the next room, just so if something happens, you know they can easily call their um, parents. And you know we are very careful in also choosing our uh, partners, such as photographers, hair and makeup artists. So since we have partnered with Nix Institute of Beauty, um, they've been very good to us. And they've been very good uh, makeup artists. And, you know, uh, we're very careful with that because we also have a daughter. Uh, I miss her. I mean, uh, She's so beautiful. Yeah. <laughs> and as I mentioned <laughs> to you. you, she is going to be the next Miss Universe Philippines. Oh, it's well, going to happen. Hopefully. It's going to happen. Hopefully when she... Hopefully, when she finishes college already, and she's already a doctor, that's the time we told her you can all, you can finish first your school and then you can always come back to pageantry. Yeah, that's school the now best. is the priority. Yeah, no, that's the best thing because mm. sometimes you know people tend to be addicted to pageants and then mm. end up not finishing their studies because pageants yeah. is very addicting, especially yes. in the Philippines. You know, it's, yes. The, the 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 bad thing I think with pageants right now is that people see it as a as a pathway to better better life. But actually, to be honest, as a as a pageant organizer, I believe it is not. It is just a form of entertainment mm-hmm. to yourself as a candidate and to your family as as your relatives and. To the people watching you, it's not really a quick ticket to a better life. I mean, yes, um, it may but give you But you have to give a lot of work because some yes, people think, oh, true. if I win the crown, I'm going to automatically become a, a celebrity. A yeah. No, yes. it takes work. You know, it, yeah. they're saying you are what to do with the crown. So if you don't well, put well, any... Mm-hmm. Go ahead. Yeah, yeah. Well, actually, the thing with pageantry is that it gives you the title to use, to have something under your belt, and it's up to you how you want to work it out. Uh, it is not an automatic thing that if you won a pageant, you're already going to go big time. Sometimes even the, ti- the non-title holders are the ones who, yes. you know, become, become because... I think it has to do with psychology also. If you get to lose a competition, you tend to better yourself. And while bettering your, mm-hmm. while you're, you're thinking of, of making yourself better, you become the better individual than the one who won. So I think um, pageantry is just, it's just to give um, uh, like a title. It is not a quick ticket. 
Although we cannot deny the fact that like the, our first universe of the Philippines, the first Miss Universe of the Philippines, Gloria Diaz, it became her title to, to, be an, uh, to be an actress. Same with Margie Moran. But though Margie Moran took a different route, she went into business, had a very good married life. So it really depends on the person how he or she wants to use the title in order to pursue her, her or his uh, dreams in life. Okay, so let's talk about the Miss Young mm -hmm. pageant. Um, yes. Explain to us the components of the competition. How will it all work? Because I'm so excited. And mm -hmm. to all the MCGP fans out there and to all the people mm -hmm. in Canada who's watching, mm -hmm. the Young Canadian Achiever, which is the title mm -hmm. holder from the Miss Canada Globe Productions, is the official representative mm -hmm. of Canada to the Miss yeah. Young pageant. Mm -hmm. So some mm -hmm. people would like to know, what is the component of the Miss Young pageant? Well, of course, as in any pageant, you have uh, the evening gown, you have the personal interview, you have the talent round, and then we're still thinking if if it's uh, if we if we could do um, swimwear, but I it's not so. going to be like yeah, it's not going to be like you know the usual swimwear that because uh, these are teens, you know, so mm -hmm. it has to be in good taste and it has to be up to their age. Uh, so basically, those are the components. Um, what we usually do what in our other pageants is that all the components have their own preliminary. And then we're going to total the score. And whoever gets into the top 10 or the top 15, they would Compete be scored. The uh, yes, yeah. And then in the final night, that's going to be how uh, they're going to be judged by the judges on that night. Okay. The, uh, with, with Borgen, we don't have any organi organizer say we actually don't uh, meddle with the judges all we have to do all we do is just compete for the scores and then whatever mathematics is a def is a it's a concrete um science so whatever whoever uh gets the score gets the score we don't have a say on that so talking about the personality component of the pageant yeah. Is this going to be an advocacy judge judging no. or no? Uh, uh, the, Miss Young basically is a beauty pageant. So what we want to do is like get someone from fourteen to nineteen years old that can represent the youth, can represent the young women of the world, yes. and it has nothing to do with advocacy. You know you. I don't think beauty pageants should have advocacy. I mean, that's my personal opinion. Because at the end of the day, the person who is beautiful wins. I mean, it's nice that the person has advocacy because that's her personal, uh, that's her personal, um, uh, what you call this, uh, mode. that's a personal thing for her. But it's not something that we want, we require, though it is something that would add up to, his, to her personality. If you do advocacy, definitely you become a better person, I suppose. So your personality goes a little bit, you know, to the top. Okay, but there will be a question and answer portion. Yes, there would be a, yes, especially during, because on the preliminary, it's going to be a personal interview with a panel of judges. Uh, we are not part of that. Usually, those are the people that we feel would be best. Uh, there's only one that's going to be coming from the organizer, that is the Vice President for Aesthetics, who is uh, Tunachua. Uh, I think you've met him also in India, our yes. makeup artist. Yes. yes. So he, he, he's, he usually sits in the personality, um, personality uh, uh, preliminaries. And then during the final night, Whoever gets to the top, to the semifinals, will get a Q&A. Just to let everybody know, the whole team Philippines during the Missing International pageant, they've been very supportive of me, mm -hmm. especially because that was the year that was when my mom passed away and I was in India. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. having a doctor in in India was actually a, a plus because they were ready to put calming pills on me because I was just <laughs> like 
it, it really hit me so hard, but I just want to say thank you so much also for looking after me when I was yeah, in India, yeah. you know, but they're so cool yeah. because, you know, like if it was, if they were not there, it would have been boring. <laughs> you know what I yeah. mean? <laughs> it was so fun, talk- you know. I, I I failed to thank you for the fried chicken you left us. You know, you appreciate that. <laughs> no, I, I I was so excited to see KFC in India because yeah, I mean the food was just very different, right? I mean, um, yes. But I I'm I love Indian food, but I cannot have it every day. Yes, that's true. You know, Likewise. but <laughs> yeah, but we had we had it three times a day. Yeah, um, every day true. for the good good two weeks and so when we were treated for kfc we were not we because even at the hotel we were like shocked i'm like oh you know ra- um it's like radisson hotel but the food was still indian food for breakfast lunch yeah. and dinner so yeah it's good that you guys were like actually going outside and getting yeah. domino's pizza so, yeah <laughs> that's true that's true you can't do anything in india except eat indian food <laughs> <laughs> so now actually i wanted to talk about like how will the production be because people would like to find about miss young so yeah it will be how yeah. many days and yeah. what would be the activity? So if you can just give like a picture or like yeah, a picture. Yeah, uh, okay. This, this is the thing, Mia. Last January, um, because we we also, I mean, our main business in the Philippines is not Forge and Entertainment Ventures. Our main business is a medical business. It's called Immuni Boosters and International Travelers Medical Center. We are basically in the medical industry. So last January 7, we already announced because we knew. We, I, I myself participate in uh, conferences here and abroad, here in the Philippines and abroad as well, together with my partner, Dr. Bernilla. And based on our study, when we did our study and when we uh, corresponded with some of our friends uh, in the medical industry also from abroad, it, we already knew that this is going to go big, the pandemic. So last January, you already made an announcement that all boards and pageants would not happen this year. The main reason for that is this. Um, pageantry is all about sisterhood, brotherhood. It's all about um, entertaining your audience. How can we entertain our audience if you cannot even take a photo with your candidate? How can we... How can we promote sisterhood or brotherhood amongst the candidates if they cannot even talk to each other? Because you have to be six feet apart, you know? Yes. Uh, I, I, I think with, with, with everything that's, uh, that is happening in the, in, in the world due to this pandemic, the pageantry business or the pageant, we have to innovate. And right now, Borjan is trying to innovate things. Uh, we've been thinking of how to push through with the pageants, but definitely not this year. We don't want to jeopardize the health of the candidates. We don't want to jeopardize the health of the suppliers, the makeup artists, the photographers, and the people flying. I mean, right now, there's, there are travel bans, especially to uh, tropical countries like us. There yes. are tra- travel bans and you know it's going to be hard for an international pageant to happen especially in the philippines not even in asia um we're still in the innovation phase of everything um but if everything holds well and without the pandemic it could have been a seven day seven day journey arrival stores preliminary stores photo shoot stores but you know uh, we we still cannot. We're the first uh, production in the Philippines that canceled. We canceled since January all our pageants, including Miss Young, even our Mr. Universe Tourism, which is running on its fourth year already, which is an international male pageant. We have canceled it this year. Our Rehash Kinoong Pilipinas, which is a very uh, sought after pageant for males, we already canceled it already. Um, we canceled it already because we don't want to, you know, jeopardize the health. It is something that um, I'd rather I'd rather not mount it and keep everybody healthy than 
bring have it just for the sake of having it and at the end of the day someone would get sick and attributed by participating to us uh with with our pageant i think the best time to do this to do any pageant would be the time that uh, there's a vaccine um the vaccine has been tested what if there's no vaccine is well well, they're saying, um, we. I just talked with some people from the medical industry. We had a Zoom meeting the other day, and they were saying that it might not come in the next year or so. But, you know, we. I just pray that it would come. If there's no vaccine, well, we really have to innovate. Maybe we go online. Maybe we don't know yet. We, we have to be... Uh, we have to be innovative at this phase. Uh, I know there's one pageant here in the Philippines a national pageant that's going to do it online, which I don't know how they're going to do it. I don't believe in that. Yeah, yeah. I, I yeah. Think I've seen it because Miss World, um, sorry, not Miss World, Miss mm. England, who mm -hmm. um, is the English representative to Miss World, they did the online pageant. And mm -hmm. they didn't even have a swimsuit, but they had a swimsuit to make it more interesting. And it mm. was not the same. But let's see, yeah. because... Miss Earth Philippines is the one doing it. I'm letting everybody. Yeah. So, yes. but uh, as, as everybody is watching right now, you're listening to a pageant organization that the main organizers are actually very involved with the medical field. And yes. this is from what they're saying is that it's very risky in their own end because it's different from the in the Philippines and it's different here in Canada it's different in different environments and that's yeah. why because the pageant is being held in the Philippines where everything is overpopulated to do a pageant yeah. it will be a bigger risk because yeah. I've spoken to other organizations and um, right now it's still a go but like mm -hmm. these are like from Europe and um, some Central America. So I can I, I, I understand. Think, I, I, I think it's uh, easy ahead. for a European country to host. I, I think it's easy for a European country to host, although except Italy and Poland, you know. But um, we still have to find out. We see how, how everything goes. Because right now, the Philippines is still on the first wave. And... Um, during the time that we were studying this illness last January, we, we know that the peak of this would come in the third quarter of this year. And uh, of course, after the climax of the, 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 the cases, that's the time it's going to go like, you know, go down. And then there would be another climb too. We really can, um, I, I don't know how to say it in English, but you know, in, in Tagalog, they say, walang kasiguraduhan. There's Unsecurity. nothing. Unsecurity. Unsecurity. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Uh, there, there's no, there's no uh, has, uh, there's no security as to when everything would happen, and especially in the Philippines, you know, in the Philippines they idolize pageant contestants more so the winners. I yes. mean, how can how can you have a pageant wherein you're not gonna let someone take a photo with a candidate? I don't think it's possible. You know, um, my daughter. Ha has been a candidate here in the Philippines. And I know that there are times that people would want to take photos of her. I was just imagining if during the time she was a candidate, there was COVID, I think she'll get sick. Because, you know, everybody goes to you. Everybody wants to take a photo of yeah. you. You cannot, you cannot have a photo with, with, your, with a candidate that you're fancying if she's like six feet apart, you know? So I guess it, it's quite hard to right now put concretize everything. But... Um, we still have to innovate. We're still thinking how we're going to innovate things. Um, online pageants for us is, I don't know if it's something that we would want to do. Uh, well, number one, beauty can be digitally enhanced. <laughs> Correct. Uh, if you, yeah, if you really have a good team behind you during your pageant, online pageant, you can have good lighting, good uh good filters and you might you know uh make yourself more beautiful at the end of the day this is a beauty pageant so the most beautiful win beautiful with the heart of course have you watched the american idol they, like it's like they did it online. Yes. 
And I yeah. was, like, it was so, it's not the same. Where the, yes. the it's not the same moment where, like, you know, um, the performer was like, was performing like in a screen. There's yeah. no, there's no stage effects. And it's the same thing yeah. as packs. You have yeah. to have proper production to make it worth it, yeah. you know? Yeah. And I know for a fact that in the Philippines, when they do a production of a pageant, it's like, boom. So yeah. it's better to wait mm-hmm. and- And I and think, and I think- production. And I think it's it's also if if it's a if it's really live, the the audience would also give the cheers of the audience also boost the the confidence Girls. of the women. Yes. Yeah. How can you you know how can you strut your way if if there's you don't even hear a clap? Do you know what I mean? If if you're like next and then you don't hear anything. And then you're just cute. Now, okay, you walk in your swimwear in your living room. I, I don't know. think it's possible. I, I, just, because, I saw it. It was so horrible. Maddox, it's like, when I watched it, I'm like, I'm shaking my head. Yeah. And it was uh-huh. just like, it's so, it looks so tacky. And it's yes. like cheesy, very cheesy. And the girls were wearing these kind of swimsuits and they were like doing it in their backyard. And I'm like, yeah, I'm crying out loud was like I couldn't believe what I saw it's it's for me it's like a desperate move I think it's very different for okay for Miss Earth or for Miss Universe or it's very different because they're very 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 big production Mm -hmm. and I think they they have a time that they're um, running after because you cannot have if, if the international... You cannot organization... crown two queens in the same year. Yeah. So so I think yeah. they're running after sending, having a candidate. So, well, as they say, Vietnam has been, uh, is, is doing well with the, in coping up with the pandemic. So I think they're going to be a good um, host for this. Um, we might think also of that one, but uh, we still have to check because in Vietnam, you have to have government permits in order yes. to mount an event. So um, we're still checking with our um, a, a friend of ours who's a, uh, the a franchise holder of Mr. Universe Tourism Vietnam, how we can mount it there. But we're still, it's still in the drawing board, so we can't really define it yet as to you know, how, how it's going to happen. But I think right now, all we have to do as in the pageant industry is just Hope for the best, and That's I think entertainment. I think but entertainment for, would entertainment would us, be the last one to open. Yes, yes, and and we we've, we've I've had meetings with different uh, pageant organizers as well. Mm. We did Zoom meetings because the Universal Petite Pageant, which is mm-hmm. the, the what you're telling me about. Petite, yes, um, they're still doing it in September. Um, and, um, it's a cruise. Oh, wow. And yes. And yes, there's like a, obviously it's a very good experience. And um, I mean, yeah, well, that's an when, innovation. Yes. That's an innovation doing it in a cruise. We might also consider that maybe like an Asian cruise, everybody yes. flies to Hong Kong. And I would Kong. love that. If you do that, yeah. oh my God. Like it's like, because I've been to Asian cruises, the Star Cruise, mm-hmm. amazing. Yeah, you go like, like Halong a... Bay. Yeah. Yes. That's just a good one. Maybe we could consider that. Thank you for that. We can consider. Let, yeah. Let's, so let's, let's, let's. I. I'll have someone call Star Cruises now. <laughs> a, but yeah. I'm, like um, she's she's still doing it because of the fact that like, I mean, um, obviously. Do you know 45? Uh-huh. Do you know who we call 45? You know 45, uh-huh. right? Okay, well, uh-huh. President 45 um, is like really hurrying up to get the economy started. So uh-huh. that's the reason why they are shooting the thing. But there's still a little bit of insecurity because of the fact that cruises, that's where the problem what? started. 
yeah, when someone turns out to be positive inside the cruise ship, I mean, everybody, yes. everybody's yes. like, it's like suicide, you know. So it's going to be very hard also. But it is something because if, if, for example, everybody has been screened, I mean, being in a cruise would be the safest place you could be if everybody's negative, you know. So, yeah. Who knows? Maybe, and maybe no, that's because they dock to the resort. I'm they sorry, they dock to the resort. resort. Oh, yeah. I, I, I think um, I'll observe Universal PT by September. I'll observe how they're going to do it. And I'm very and I'm sure you'll be, you should send your girl there too. No, I don't think so. <laughs> Unless my daughter wants to join, of course. Why not? Representing but, you know, September Philippines. Is, but September is, you know, the high, I mean, they're going to have hybrid uh, in the Philippines, all the students are going to do hybrid learning. So some would be online, some would be in person. So we don't know if I if I'll have a candidate for that. But let me check. Message me who's the national I who's the pageant organizer for that one. I did. I did put you in the chat for that. Her name is Daisy Lopez. Oh yeah. Ah oh, yeah 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 yeah. Now I remember. Now I yes. remember. How's every so, how's everything there? Okay, go ahead. Well, I, I, right now, COVID-19, I mean, it's very different from in the United States and it's very different here in Canada because the U.S. has been hit hard. But mm -hmm. what's making it worse is that 45 mm -hmm. is being inappropriate with everybody. Um, his le leadership is like bringing and dividing everybody in the United States. But here in Canada, we have a very good prime minister, mm -hmm. which, um, you know, we've been hit hard economy-wise mm -hmm. economy and as well as um, health-wise. But he's getting mm -hmm. everybody together and all united. That's the difference between Americans and Canadians, you know, because yeah. we don't trigger people to divide everybody. Mm -hmm because we're very multicultural and we're very accepting of everyone. And to us, that's the most important part, that when it comes to this, we are all united to fight mm -hmm. it, you know? So mm -hmm. that's the difference. But um, again, it's very different too, because United States is a pageant country and Canada yeah. is, still, is still growing, right? So yeah. Yeah, that's true. That's, that's what it is. But in the Philippines, it's a pageant country. So, yeah. you know, like I can understand how it is. But I'm going to ask you something. How are you guys mm. dealing with the COVID-19 there? Because you guys have a strict, strict procedure. I mean, we don't have the, um, the, uh, the ECQ where, like, I mean, the army is like guarding the streets and that people cannot go out because here yeah. you're allowed uh -huh. to go out to get basic essentials. And if you're quarantined, mm -hmm. they take your word that you should not mm -hmm. go, go out. So it's very different. Well, well, in the Philippines, um, when it was announced March 15, when we underwent a, um, a, uh, ECQ, enhanced community quarantine. No one can go out except someone who would also buy essential. Um, to be honest, we never felt it that as much because um, we're in the medical field, so we have passes. Uh, we can go out. Um, but based on my ex based on our my friends, um, this they just nominate someone, usually the most healthy person to go out of the house. They don't allow senior citizens to get out of the house because they're in the vulnerable uh, population. Um, it's basically still okay in the middle class area, but I don't really know in the other places because like some places in Manila and in Quezon City, Quezon City has the highest number of COVID cases. Um, there are certain barangays or districts that have been in total lockdown for a, for like 24 hours or 48 hours. So basically because the spike of the incidence is high. But um, I think people are coping up. Of course, you know, 
there's a lot of comments about how the government is handling it, but as a Filipino citizen, as a taxpayer, all you have to do is protect ourselves. We cannot blame the no, government for everything. I don't blame the yeah. government. Let me tell you because yeah. Philippines, I mean, especially in the mm. lower class, they're yeah. very stubborn. Yes. So, uh, well, when when during the times that we are um, going to our patients' houses, um, because we do house calls because they cannot go out, um, I often see people still outside of their homes talking That's to each other without a mask. Yeah, I think it wouldn't. I think what we lack here is the is the understanding of the illness. Yes, I think. That have been more educational materials for people if people realizes how this could affect their lives i mean you know this is something it's like a death sentence if you get to have one we know we we have a lot of doctor friends uh who has succumbed to this illness some of them died already and um it's emotional for us because since we are in the same industry, it only means it could also happen to us. I and, was in the medical field, so I could yeah, understand. Yeah. I mean, yeah, so, everybody, and, my sisters were like really like freaking out when I went back because I, mm-hmm. I am at a high risk having yeah. ALS. Yes. But you can't, and you I, have to do something. Yeah, it's, 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 if you want to be apathetic about everything, all you have to do is just stay at home, especially if you're in the medical industry. But uh, I think it is now that we are needed more than any time. So Dr. Bernie Ulia, my partner, has been going around the city, visiting his patients who cannot go out of their houses. Uh, we've been called, we've, we've helped, some in our own little way in uh, giving medical attention to those people in need who cannot afford tertiary um, care. Um, it's hard because if, if you get to study the numbers here in the Philippines, most of the affected ones are the middle class. A, a little bit on the lower middle class, uh, basically because they are the travelers, they are the ones who are going out of their houses, um, this illness made made us realize the importance of life, and you know, I remember hearing someone that I know who died. It was really uh, emotional for me and my partner because we know the person. Uh, and sometimes it's hard because I I see some of my friends their 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 parents died in the province, and because it's ECQ, they cannot go to the province. They cannot even see. The final remains of their pain, of of their family members. So, I think that's the hardest part of this illness. Uh, it is it's taking toll on the emotion of people, it's especially same- especially if 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 you live alone. How can you you know how can you cope up with this if you live alone? You know the good thing is that we have social media right now. So I I don't if this happened. In the 80s, I think there's going to be a lot more people that's going to be affected because they have nothing else to do at home. So I mean, they will all go out. What really makes me um, think, and I know we're not talking about pageants right now, but this is so important, yeah. Yeah. is that, you know, healthcare is not for free. So, mm-hmm. I mean, I've there's one who, I mean, we were talking about it because in the ministry in my church, they were talking about... Um, how they had to, um, one Filipina lady um, who actually went and the family was so poor because she, like the, the husband got COVID-19. I mean, they got cured and everybody, they had to pay 500 something thousand pesos to pay for like a week's stay in a hospital. Yeah. And not everybody has that money. So how can people afford it? I, that's mm-hmm. Because here in Canada, our government pays for our health care. So we, mm-hmm. free hospital, 
free care, you know, that's one yeah, thing that's that a good, I would that's, look me to have. That's a good thing with first world countries. You guys have very good health care. So the thing that we can just do here is, you know, don't go out, stay home, wait till everything is okay. If it's not necessary and you have no business going out, you don't go out. Um, it's, if you go out of your house, it's like putting your foot into the grave already. Um, better protect yourself all the time. But that's the problem, though, because some people in the Philippines have, <laughs> oh, bless you, girl, bless you, bless you, Excuse me. No, but like some people in the Philippines, the way how they the labor system works is like no work, no pay. Yeah. And some well, people especially for contractual. Have no choice but to yeah. go out and pay and work yeah. to get yeah. money, feed the people, right? Well, 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 actually, uh, well. When it was announced, when COVID-19 pandemic was announced here in the Philippines and we had ECQ, we didn't operate right away. We actually closed down all our clinics from March 15 to the end of March. And um, what we did, we still paid their salaries. We, we, we still paid the salaries in full because we believe that's the only way that we can help them. And... Uh, when there was a clamor for our clinics to open up because a patient, some patients need our services at the time, when we opened April 1, we bought everybody PPEs, everybody have their own PPEs, have their own face masks, have their own gears. Dr. Bernilla wears like a respirator, actually. So I see that. Yeah. So you just have to, this is happening. People, especially the people in pageantry, I'm. Some of them are in denial that this is not happening. That's why they still want to push through with things, you know. But uh, you're gonna be risking the lives. Bini still happening. Bini Bini will still happen. Bini Bini Filipina ah. is still scheduled. Um. And Miss Universe. The last time, they moved yeah, it. Miss, yeah, to October. Um, I don't know with Binibini in Filipinas, but for Miss Universe Philippines, I know they've moved it already to, I think, October or November. And I don't know how they're going to do it. So I guess Borgen would now, what we have to do right now is actually study everything and get all the good practices that they will be doing to come that's up with the most... Your advantage. Yeah, that's our advantage because we already canceled ours since January. So all we have to do is like sit down and observe what's going to happen because... I'm afraid, I'm really afraid because I don't know if everybody knows this, but the R naught, meaning the infection rate of 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 COVID-19 is 2.5 to 3, meaning one person can infect three people or at least two. Yes. So if there's like one candidate who had a helper, then that helper went to the market and that helper bought from someone that is COVID positive, and that candidate goes to the pageant activity, that person can infect two today. And then the next day, those three can infect another two. So it's, it's going to be a hard scenario if that happens. And you know we don't want to take the blame for it. And we want to preserve everybody's life. A lot of people have died already in the world. And mm -hmm. uh, we, I mean, it pities me, especially like, in Italy, how everything is there, because uh, we've been talking with some pageant organizers there as well, and um, some of them already canceled. But I think there's one pageant that is going on. I don't know how they're going to do it. I'm still observing them. Yeah, because we have, there's one international pageant happening um, in June in mm. Kosovo, right? And mm. they don't have a lot of infected rates. And... For us, um, we have been meeting also with med with the medical officers for mm -hmm. our pageant, and so we are still on schedule for August. And mm -hmm. um, what what we were told is that everybody must have a cert must apply a certification of um, they have to have um, a COVID test. Health. Yes. Yeah. And then from there, um, then we can. I think the, the hard, 
I think the one of the hardest parts here right now in mounting an international pageant is also the travel ban. Because there yeah. are there are certain countries that ban one country to go to a next country. The borders are closing up. And I think with borders closing closing, um, limiting the movements of people, it's gonna be hard for people to move. I'm sure I'm sure you wouldn't want to have a Miss Italy right now. <laughs> I'm but sure. I love the, Italian. Yeah, but the thing is, I think, um, I think with the national pageant itself, like, um, it's okay to do, but internationals, yeah. I would be scared yeah. because of the fact yeah. that there's, like, you know, you can't, you don't know the people that are coming in and out, right? So yeah. I can and, and, understand that. And the thing is. They're going to be in a plane, in an airplane for hours just to get to your place. And uh, you don't know if the person sitting behind or beside or in front of the candidate has COVID. And, you know, the, the candidate gets into your country, in the Philippines, and since she's still healthy for the next 24 hours, she participates. And then on the third day, you find out she's, COVID positive, what are we going to do? There's going to be a lot of, and a high liability for pageant organizers if that happens. Yes. And it's, I've checked already with in health insurances. Since it was um, declared pandemic, they're not covered in COVID-19. So That's the issues of the producers right now. Yes. A lot of insurances don't cover it. So I was thinking before, like, if we're going to hold, we're going to mount it, we're going to get an insurance for each candidate and all the participating, um, the relatives who will be flying or the team that would be flying. But uh, when I spoke with some insurances here in the Philippines, since it was announced that uh, it is a pandemic, they're not covering the illness. So we're still in I, the lockdown thing. That's that's what I'm trying to say to everybody. But for us, again, um, we we are playing it by ear. It's already yeah. planned. We're still on schedule. But when things happen, of course, our candidates are the main priority. Their safety and health is the most yeah. important thing. That yeah, has that's true. So now let's talk about because I'm sure while we're still waiting for that moment. Um, what is the prizes for the winner of Miss Young? So that people well, as you, yeah, as you know, if you're a pageant organizer, you definitely would rely on the prize once you already have the final list of candidates. So we still cannot determine that because we haven't finalized the list of countries that are participating. As you know, you know, you're in the pageant business. Um, every country sends pays a franchise fee, a participation yes. fee, and all these fees. And mm -hmm. once we come up with the with the total amount, that's the only time that we can actually say, oh, this this that's certain better. person should go to the this, that's this, better. this certain you know, we in all our pageants, we we've never announced any cash price until the time that it's there. You know, it's very Especially when they promised seventy five thousand dollars and then they were they're not able yeah. to deliver it. I'm like that becomes that's the that's what it is. That's the problem yeah. of some organizers. I like, and then some organizers say like, I I know a teen pageant. They said ten thousand dollars. You know, so I'm sure you know. And yes, you know, it's um what we do is we in our in our past um pageant, if it's a local pageant, we look at the ticket sales, and then we put a certain percentage of the ticket sales that goes to the goes to the prize. And then with the international one, we check the franchise, mm -hmm. the total amount of franchise fees and the participation fees paid. And from there, we take a, we take a, what you call this? We take a, um, a, a certain percentage. Yeah, a cut. And then we, we tell them. They, they just find out the price during, after they've won. And, you know, I think that's the problem with some candidates and uh, franchise holders or, you know, don't send someone because of the money. I think uh, this is my personal thing. Yes. Don't send because someone. Other national because national directors look at it as a 
business aspect. Yes. That's when it becomes a trafficking issue because they send girls mm. hoping because they get a cut of their cash price. That's in their contract when they send a girl, mm. even to the point when the girl did not even win the title and they scalp them from Facebook or something like that. Mm. And then... um. And these, I'm talking about the directors, okay, that sends the girls internationally without winning the title. And then they get a cut of that 30%. That's what they care about. And then, the, and then they end up kind of like it backlashes on them because the pageant is actually not a good pageant because they're doing human trafficking or yeah, I stuff think, like that. I, I mean, like, this is my advice to candidates or to pageant uh, country organizers that are sending to us to 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 board and pageant we are not here for business to be honest um board all our productions all our pageants it's just something it's out of passion and enthusiasm for pageantry don't join a pageant because of the cash prize. Why? Because if that is your end goal, better work. Don't join pageants and just work. You know, get a work that pays you a monthly salary, save it up, and you'll have money. What you do is like you try to win. You win the, the title. Once you have the title, it would give you opportunity. And it's up to you how you're going to use it. Some people win thinking it's going to be an overnight thing. The next day, they're going to be the next hot thing in media, the next hot thing in the world. It's just not the case. You know, I'm sure you agree. I'm sure there are a lot of, of, of handlers like thinking if their candidate won and then the next day, they're going to be the next big thing. You have to put, you know, bodyguards. You have to, you know, it's not like that. Life I hope is, you can see actually this documentary that was made on CNA. Yeah. And it's everybody, awesome. oh, you've I mean, seen it, bad. right? It's like, it's bad. It is sometimes, it's it, not every pageant is like that, but yeah. it it is also a reality. And that's what yes, it is. It's There's a, always good and bad side to pageantry. And yes. Uh, yes. I think the problem here is that there are people that gets to penetrate the industry, who does bad things. And the, those, the organizers just turning a blind eye, which is wrong. Um, if you get to catch a wrongdoing in your, in, in your organization, in terms of if you're a pageant organization, cut that person out. Don't let it do and ruin your goodness. Again, as I said, Borgen, this, this is just out of passion. This is just out of enthusiasm in, in giving entertainment to audience. This is not a business for us. And um, don't join a pageant thinking you're going to be the next big star. This is not Pinoy Big Brother. This is not a star search, a celebrity search. This is a beauty pageant, the most beautiful win. And if you have the title, use it. Use it to get opportunities for yourself. And sometimes candidates, they join and then they let the organization make them popular. How can that be? I mean, like, from the start, you already said, we are not a talent agency. We are not a, we are not a um, uh, entertainment uh, production outfit. We don't produce movies. We don't do that. All we're here is due to entertainment. It entertains us. It entertains the candidates. It entertains the audience. And the most beautiful is. And then you, if you want the title, use it. Use it, use it uh, as an opportunity for you to, to go to greater high. Maybe you can audition for a movie role. And then when you introduce yourself, hi, I'm Manny Kanabe. I'm the current Dinong Pilipinas title holder. Use it. And people would, you know, our, our right now, Borgen, what we want is to build up credibility so that all our winners, when people find out they're winners of our pageant, they will go like, ah, yeah, that, that's a good pageant. Maybe that, that girl or that boy has that it factor. Maybe we could invest. Producers will go, let's invest on that person. But, you know, again, sometimes 
the runners up or the non-winners actually become more popular than the winners, you know. Yeah. Well, and I, I want to. I, I I I completely understand that. And again, people have to understand into a point because see, in the Philippines, they have handlers, but here in Canada, it's different because yeah. of the fact that country by country, it's diff it's a different way yeah. of how they do pageantry. But because Philippines is the land of pageantry, I mean, yeah. you're born and bred to do pageants. Yeah. And that's the reason why there is an industry there. But in Canada, I mean, the only way you can do pageants is basically because of the fact that you um, saw it and you want to try it. But it's yeah. not like, you know, you have a manager that will yeah. groom you to enter a beauty pageant. It's very True. different. So, well, different countries have their different uh, organi orga organization. And priorities. Uh, and priority, you know. Um, yes. I, think, uh, I, I, I think at the end of the day, what every country would want to do is send the best candidate at that very yes. moment for that particular pageant. In hoping and wishing that that candidate uh, will perform well and win the title. I have to, to actually point out something because you said it's a beauty pageant, it's a beauty. But see, here in Canada or in North America, we have a lot of feminist movements who trash the idea of beauty. So, this is why we always explain to them that beauty pageants, it's Obviously, you have to be beautiful, but it's an overall package. Yes. You cannot be beautiful and you cannot even speak a good, good sentence, you know. You cannot yes. comprehend the question. You cannot be beautiful and have a great body. And yet, when people ask you what's COVID, they, you don't know. <laughs> so I think um, beauty has been defined in different ways for the past years because of the media, because how people portray beauty pageant so i guess right now all you have to do is like i think if you're the in your best you're the most beautiful i think if if as a candidate you know you're in your best you've done your part to be your best self i think you're you're the most beautiful so the people who win they have defined their best already i think that's that's how i i see it because based on on our past winners um they all been yes they are beautiful good looking but more so they have good intentions they look at the pageant the most important thing yeah and and they look at the pageant as a as an experience that would enrich them for the rest of their lives it is not something that they're doing because of one the money two of the fame three because of the exposure no they're doing it because they want to experience it. And at the end of the day, after 40 years and they have their grandkids, they have a story to tell them. Like, That's you know, the once most I... important part about yeah. that. Yes. Yeah. Like, like they can say uh, to their grandkids, you know, one time I went to the Philippines, I participated, I went to this place, I went to that place, you know, I met this. You met friends from different parts of the world like us. We met in India because yes. of pageantry. And our intention was not there to win because otherwise, you know, our intention was to experience India, was yes. to experience the pageant. So I think that's how it should play right now. It's not about fame. It's not about the prize money. It's not about how, what you get out of the pageant. It is what you can contribute towards entertainment in terms of pageantry. And that CNA documentar documentary is very bad because it was one-sided. And I have to say my disgrace because uh, male pageantry, which we also have. I was shocked. Yeah. I was shocked. The way they did it, it and was like. It, they, they, they made it appear, if someone watches that who doesn't know the Philippines, they made it appear that male pageants are the bikini shows in bars. So Yes. You know. And it was shown it was in the bars. And I yeah. and I had to explain to people that that is actually not a, a a male pageant contest because that's actually like a contest of strippers 
who are working in a bar and will do whatever it takes to get that title because they need the cash money. But yes, that's true. It's not it was like, very wrong. It I, was, uh, I was so the, shocked. The, the pageantry was portrayed very wrong, um, especially the male pageantry industry. Um, it, I, I was shocked, but you know, I'm sure CNA would come up with a follow-up documentary look after all the clamor. And even that guy who was talking about and he was saying how he's taking steroids and everything and mm, how yeah. <laughs> he has to book, be yeah. booked for different, um, for body work, sex work and everything. Yeah. I'm like, that's not really the pageant that... Mm -hmm is the traditional pageant and it's such a shame that that someone would do that someone would do that documentary and mm -hmm. i i i always have to say that that is not the pageantry that we do so yeah you know and it just gives a bad taste in people's minds that that's true like, so that's true that's true i just want to say thank you so much Mannix for spending time with uh, me and yes. giving us insight both um, pageantry oh, and mentally, <laughs> because that's so important because it's yeah. a different kind of way like you know especially hearing from a pageant organization that has medical background so yes. I mean do you have last words um, for people especially who are um, wanting to um, First, let's talk about your medical um, mm -hmm. medical mission because that's important. And then mm -hmm. second is like for other national directors out there um, who would be interested in sending their contestants mm -hmm. to Mr. Tourism. Because I know we are having our Mr. Canada Globe yeah. 2020 when they're going to your pageant, so. Yeah, so, uh, well, my message to the people right now who's watching, uh, well, number one is stay home. Especially if you're in the Philippines, try to you know adhere to the rules and guidelines of the community quarantine, maybe enhanced or modified. I think it is best right now that we do our part in uh, flattening the curve. And if there's nothing necessary to do outside of the house, just stay at home. With the pageant people, wait, please wait and be patient because we want to give you the best and the healthiest competition. We don't want anyone to get sick. Um, but still, they can, they can apply. Yes, yes. Yes, uh, yes. Because, you know, there's a lot of people going for spots, right? So Yes, yes. Um, right now, for Mr. Universe Tourism and Miss Young, the franchises for, for different countries are open. Just email us, company at gmail.com or message me via messenger at Manik Sanabe. Uh, then we take everything as we, you know, when we find out, because Mr. Universe Tourism is supposed to be held in Indonesia this November, but Indonesia has been struck also with a very bad uh, COVID-19 pandemic. So I guess everything would be on standstill, but don't fret because we are doing our best to try to innovate. One right now that I have in mind is your suggestion, which is a uh, cruise. So we can still have to find out how, how the best that we can do. So I am going to be excited. If you do it in the Star Cruise, I'm mm -hmm. going to tell you, I'm going to bring all my pageant directors <laughs> that I know. And I'm like, we have to have a party. You yeah. Know? Um, let's let's uh, play it all by ear. Yes. And keep safe. And I pray for everybody's health and safety at this time of pandemic. Uh, please continue to pray for people, of the, especially of people of the Philippines, which is we're very uh, affected by this pandemic. So uh, let's all be patient and wait it out. And don't worry because Borgen would observe all the pageants that's gonna mount this year. So we can get all the best practices for next year. Well, right. first and foremost, I'm sure a lot of people in the world who are watching would like to know how they can help in the Philippines. Because as I'm, uh, I've done feeding programs 
you yeah. know, um, I've, I've, I've done it and I've fed families. Um, mm. Even though I'm here in Canada, I made it possible. So because mm. of a good friend of mine, but I'm, I'm sure they still need a lot of help because again, being a first world citizen and a third world citizen is completely different. Yes. And in the Philippines right now, there's a lot of people that need the help. And yeah, so, can... so, so, so for people who want to donate to the Philippines, I think it's best that you go via Red Cross Philippines or you contact ABS-CBN, the Familia Network, for their donation drive or GMA Network. I think those are the best three channels to donate to the Philippines. Thank you so much again. Thank you. And it's such an honor having you online. It's and, my pleasure. Um, say hi to your to your partner, to your husband. Yes, I will. And uh, to your son and to your daughter. Yes. And to Michael and yes. to the rest Mamo. of the Borgen family. I yes. miss you guys so much. And um, we miss you too. <laughs> I miss the fun, the fun eating part, yes. all the hope yes. that comes with it. And I know that people in the in Canada who we are sending, um, which is a girl from Nunavut, um, for Miss mm -hmm. Young, she's already been so prepared for your international pageant, like you just don't believe. Mm -hmm. And then we have our Mr. Canada Globe being crowned this August to go to mm -hmm. your Mr. Universe, Mr. Universe Tourism pageant so we're ready Great. we're ready for the film all right i'll let you know once we have everything okay thank you so much bye. Bye. thank you for watching everyone bye bye